Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to Lisa Cannon's channel. Um, we're going to start with question 18 right here. So, we consider the function pz is 2z4 minus plus az3 plus 6z squared plus az plus b, where a and b are real for z. And this just means that the values for a and b will be integers. One of the roots of pz is z equals minus i. Determine the possible values for a and b such that all remaining roots of pz have an imaginary component. So, what the first step of we do here is we will write out the equation first. So pz, well, this thing is so awkward. z4 plus az3. Plus 6z squared, oh my god, it's so bad, plus b. That's a b right there. Alright, so we have this. Now, what it states here is that a possible root is z is equal to minus i. All that means is that because if it's a root, that just means that when p of z is equal to 0, then z is equal to minus i because that's just like an x coordinate so we go on to a new line we'll let p of z equal to zero and let z equal minus i so we have two bracket minus i four plus a bracket minus i to the three plus six minus i squared plus a minus i plus b all equals zero. So, we just have to do some calculations here. Let's go! So, we got minus i to the power of 4. So, this just basically means minus i times 4, you will get i to the power of 4, and that just equals 1. So then 2 times 1, it would be 2. Hello. Why isn't this working? God, hello. Oh, this is fun. So that just equals 2. We have the next one here, negative i to 3. So that's going to be negative i third, which basically just means negative times negative i. Yeah, I believe so. So, we'll have negative i, negative i to the third, and that just equals out to negative negative i, which equals positive i. Okay. Negative negative i, which is equals to positive i. That is correct. So then, this will just turn out to be plus a i. We got the next bit here, negative i squared, that just turns into i squared, which is the same as negative 1, so this one will be minus, God, this thing is minus 6, this one's self-explanatory, it's just a times negative i, so it's just going to be minus a i plus b equal to 0. So now we just have, now there's an i, so we just have to collect our like terms now, so we have 2 minus 6 is negative 4, and ai minus ai will cancel out, so that disappears, and we're just left with plus b equals 0, take the negative 4 over, b is equal to 4. That's a 4. There we go. Therefore, we can write, rewrite this equation, so therefore, p of z is equal to, once again, 2z4 plus az cubed plus 6z squared plus az plus 4. Now, what we have to do to find out a, because that is our missing little bit here, a, yes. So, what we have is, up here, we originally had a root that is complex as it has the complex number here, the i. So what this means is that given that the coefficients 
of this polynomial are real, this root here, let me do that, this root here will be a conjugate root. And all that means is that the sign will be flipped around. So therefore, we have a conjugate root. Why isn't this thing working? So then we have a conjugate root root of z equals i. And that is just the opposite there. Now, to make this into a factor, all you have to do is take it over. So then we have a new factor here of z minus i right there. Now, with null factor law, that would just be equal to zero like that. And with this other z equals minus i here, we have our other factor already, which is z plus i is equal to zero. Now, we want to find out another root, and how we can do that is multiplying these two roots together. So, all we got to do is multiply, as you would. z minus i, z plus i. And it's just basically algebra here. This will equal to z squared, z i minus z i, they cancel out, and then you have negative i times i, which is negative i squared, and all that's going to equal out to is negative 1 times negative 1, which is equal to positive 1. And there is your new factor there. Now, what we can do with this new factor here is factorize the original polynomial that we have on the top. So, therefore, p of z is equal to this factor we just found here, z squared plus 1. Yeah. And now it just comes the tricky part of trying to match up with our original polynomial here. So we have z squared here, we have 2z4 on the top here, so what we want to make first is 2z squared to match up with that one. And next one we want to make is az cubed, and to match that up all we just need to add is an az and now this part gets a bit tricky because you have your next part of 6z squared. Now since this part's already 6z squared here, you want to think about this part here. So the 1 times 2z squared will already have 2z squared. So all you need remaining is a 4z squared. So therefore this thing at the back is going to be 4. And you can check that by just going again. So that will be 2z4 plus a z3, plus 4, 4 z squared, plus 2 z squared, which is 6 z, z squared, 1 times a z is a z, 1 times 4 is 4, just like our polynomial right here. Now, the final little bits we got here, this bit right here, that is a quadratic. Now, we got a rule that we had with complex numbers regarding this thing here. You all remember the little discriminant, like in the quadratic formula here, the b squared minus 4ac. There are certain rules with the number of roots that we have in our problem here. So, since our two roots that we found were both complex, this just means that all if all roots have an imaginary component, then they're all complex. Now, we have a rule in our textbook somewhere, it's in like 5.7, right around like that. But you can go flip back through there and they have these similar rules. And one of the rules is that if it's complex, all the roots are complex, so if all roots are complex, are complex, then, oh no, it depends again then b squared minus 4ac, this is just the rule, by the way, has to be less than 0. Now all we got to do here is mix and match our little things. So, we have this area here, a, b, c, so we just max again, 
we have a squared, because that the b value here is a minus four times it's a four four times two times four less than zero. And then this will just equal out to a squared a squared four times four times a four times two is eight times four is thirty-two. A squared minus thirty-two is less than zero, therefore a has to be less than the root of 32. And now the last part is here, so we just have a final little bit of a is root 32. Now to figure out, remember we would go back up to here, a and b are an element of z, and remember that just means integers, so they have to be complete whole numbers. Now root 32 is between root 25 which is equal to 5 and it's also between root 36 which is equal to 6 so since it's in between these values it can it cannot go further than 5 but it can go all the way up to 1 so therefore values as previously stated so a is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And as you previously stated, all the way back, b is equal to 4. There we go. Like and subscribe.